Go. Cool. So, okay. So, you know, when you're born, arguably speaking, you're a clean slate. You may have all the wisdom and the knowledge, but you can't communicate, you know, and you don't know how the modern world works yet. And so, and so the first, the first culture that you're born into is the culture of your parents. And so whatever the circumstance, the parents you chose, et cetera, you know, your, your mother and your father kind of lay, uh, or your, whoever's raising you kind of lay this culture that you're born into. And, you know, your brain hasn't fully developed yet. And, you know, there's, there's all of that story around that. And so, so culture is important for humans. And so the first thing that you're born into is, is the, 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 the situation of your parents and you're just kind of feeling your way through and, you know, complying and, 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 and being able to eat and, you know, <laughs> and use your body and everything. And then usually I'm, I'm at a situation right now where uh, I have four kids and three of them are leaving and the youngest one is hitting puberty. And so puberty, <laughs> then kind of kicks you into this Oedipus thing where you have to kill your father. And, you know, I've been through this where my, my oldest son was like, I reject you, dad, here's your sperm back and everything, which as a father who you've worked to raise this kid, it's, it's a heartbreaking kind of situation, but it's a necessary thing that you have to go through for them to come into their own. Now we used to ritualize it with like a bar mitzvah or, you know, there was some uh, com uh, coming of age, you know, rites, that, that, that people had to go through what we've, we've kind of lost that. You, the closest thing you have is like graduation from, from high school or something. But, um, but you, have to, you, have to, you have to leave the culture of your, uh, that you've been born into, into kind of consensus reality, right? And so, and so you have, you know, the material world is kind of like Minecraft. You know, all of the systems and everything were created by all the people before us. Mm. And so, you know, from a, from a Greek perspective, there's phusis, which is nature. And then there's techne and the collective intention of everyone that's ever existed in nature is what creates, you know, space and time in the material world, arguably speaking. Mm. And so, so you have to learn, you know, taxes, how to drive a car, how to cross the street, red light, green, you know, well, actually some of those you learn kind of when you were young, but you have to, you, you learn and you have to catch up to consensus reality. Uh, and then for some people through this process, and then there's the right hand path, people that kind of follow the rules and climb the systems and or climb the, the systems, the ladders that have been put in by the people before. And then you have the left hand path people, which are the artists, the entrepreneurs, and they're the ones that are ideally going to birth kind of the new systems for the next generations and everything. Hmm. And these guys will optimize it. These guys will create the new, you know, the hmm. right hand path versus the left hand path. Through this, from both categories, there are some people, if I'm within consensus reality and a right hand path person, and then let's say I lose my job, I get divorced and my parents die all in the space of the same month, you know, I, I'm not able to maintain my referential reality anymore. And I might have like a, an experience, or if I'm a left-hand path person and I push really hard on my thing, then, um, uh, and so, so there's, you're born, there's consensus reality. And then if you push really hard for some people, you have an awakening experience. Mm. And so things get kind of surreal, the subjective and the objective kind of merge together. Uh, and then you start getting downloads, you know, you may, <laughs> you know, you, and you realize, for me at least, the realization that the reality that you've been taught isn't the reality, the real reality, and you have a direct experience of it. Not a conceptual thing, but a direct experience of it. And then that, you know, so there's this awakening period which happens, which ideally somebody that has been through the experience can get to you. You know, and you have like a two to three week window period. If someone who's had the experience gets to you, uh, you have a chance. <laughs> but if that doesn't happen, you still have a chance. But if it doesn't happen, a lot of people will end up in a psych ward because they get downloads and everything and they become sensitive. All these channels open up and, and, and modern society doesn't, you know, the best. And, and then they're kind of like in this hypomania state. And then, you know, they talk to their friends and everything. Hey, Gina, 
just chill out, man. <laughs> no, you don't get it. <laughs> and then, um, and then, hey, we love you. We care for you. We don't know how to, what to do with you. We've never seen this. I haven't been through it before. And and so they they end up, you end up in a psych ward or something like that, and then put on pharmaceuticals. And, and so there's this acute period where you know there's an urgent situation. And then usually after that, there's a stabilization. So I'm still sensitive. I actually gave all of my stuff away because I realized the material world was bullshit and everything. Or I, um, I, uh, I alienated all my friends and family because they didn't understand me and I was pushing really hard and whatever. And so these people, generally speaking, they, they need like a roof over their head and food. <laughs> they need to, to, to stabilize. Uh, and then after that, usually they have to find a, a, a way of sustaining themselves. And this usually is, you know, and you, the problem with this is the, the stories that used to drive them in consensus reality don't really mean that much to them anymore. And so I can't go back to work at the bank or that factory because, you know, it just doesn't really make sense to me anymore, et cetera. And so they have to find a new vocation. And so some people, they, they, they develop these gifts. And so they, they become healers or something, but they are, you know, and so they, 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 they need to become self-sustaining where they can put a roof over their head and, and, and food and everything. And so they do that by finding a new vocation or moving in with an intentional community somewhere in nature or something. And where I'm appreciated, I'm in nature, these people get me, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy here and, and, and everything. People like Mark Wagnon, for example. And so, 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 so there, once they're stabilized, then the idea is to get them to be thriving where they can kind of function and succeed kind of in the, in the consensus reality in the modern world, and they can deal in the esoteric just fine as well too, and they're grounded for that. And so those are kind of these, these stages. Uh, and, and part of the realization is that the people kind of awakening and beyond they see the world very differently. <laughs> and having uh, people like that engage people that haven't been through the experience, um, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's an impedance mismatch there, uh, which is difficult. And then rather than trying to bridge that, which is very difficult and a lot of people are trying to do, mm. the idea first is to get these people together and organized. And then among these people, create the new products and services for the masses. Hmm. Now, the challenge for these people, and I, I know there's been struggle around this, is like, hey, how do I make money in all of this and everything? They, said they come back in here, but they can't really function well in here. Um, and so really the whole thing is in, in creating new products and services and, and systems is to understand that there's, there's, there's the consensus reality part. And then there's kind of the future the far future where language is not even necessary <laughs> and we all know what to do because we're all kind of tuned in, right? But we're not there yet. And the people that are there have a hard time engaging in this because it's too brutish, so to speak. And so there are efforts like Burning Man. It's like, hey, how do we create something from here and do this temporary thing? But better would be how do we get this stuff together and then get, and for me at least, where money comes into play at least is in uh, products and services for consensus reality and then working with the outliers because they're still, they still have a toe within the modern world consensus reality thing. But then products and services for those that have been through the process should be looked at in a very different way. And so part of what we're looking at is for like the Antarabov project, the initial idea was to set up a couple of places around the world, these kind of Betty Ford clinics for people going through awakening. But one of the interesting things from COVID we realized is that you, there's a lot that you can do online. You know, if you're going through an experience and I connect with you and I kind of bring you fully here, you know, uh, and then I have other people that do deep possessions and everything that have seemed to work. <laughs> and so they sit with a person online, they connect, and then they kind of release and everything. And then the person's more grounded. And, and so there's a lot that can be done remotely. And so right now there's been the spiritual emergency network and 
in the US and oh, we have to have certified doctors and you have to be accredited because you have insurance and liability and you can get sued and all this other stuff. You know, rather than that right now, we're looking at kind of like building a network of people that have been through the process to be able to hold space and use their healing modalities to help midwife other people going through the process. And so for that, this Antara project is A, we still have a bunch of places around the world that we're kind of working towards collaborating with, but then B, it's getting these healers to like donate two hours a week of their time and mystics to donate like a day a week of their time. And a healer is someone that still has to make money and is worried about that. And a mystic is someone that doesn't have to worry about money anymore. And usually for these people, people like you, where, you know, whatever they're doing, it's my life's work. I'm going to be doing this. With her, you know? And so people that have kind of thought all the way through, you know, I'm going to do this anyways, because this is what I'm here to do. <laughs> and I've got a good enough relationship with the universe that I, I you know, the universe has my back and, you know, I'm, I'm taken care of and I, I, I'm grounded enough so that I can kind of engage in this way. And so with this population of people, then it's basically to build a growing global uh, community of these people to basically help midwife people go, go through this process and then help to give them tools to stabilize and then work towards self-sustainability. And so that's Project Antarabhav. Once we have them stabilized, what I'm also doing is finding people, because once you're out of consensus reality, there are seers, there are people that are medical intuitives, there are empaths, there are all of these people with unique gifts. Right now, if you look at consensus reality, it's either talk therapy or pharmaceuticals. I mean, that's it. <laughs> and, you know, if you do like rolfing or cranial sacral or release work or qigong and all of this other stuff, modern science or consensus reality doesn't even, under, doesn't even acknowledge exists, right? You know, qi, you know, they've tried to measure it. it. It's not measurable by devices, but it's something that, you know, you can kind of, you know, people can be aware of, consciousness can be aware of it. And then even acupuncture, which is a massive industry, Western science doesn't know meridians don't exist. They're not physical things in the body. And so none of that, you know, registers at all among consensus reality. But among this, these people that have been through these experiences, uh, there are a lot of other tools that can be used to help heal and to facilitate. And the idea is to get this group together to do the shadow work among them. Because the problem with in, in creating the containers, and that's where your work is very useful, uh, in, that, in that a lot of people came up this, to the summit, what they think is a summit, what is a possible summit, but they came along their own track and they've developed their own gifts. Some people get downloads, some people see entities, some people see auras. And you know, if what I see isn't what you see, and then I'm dealing with all these consensus reality people, I can't tell the difference between you and everything, but I'm hearing my guides and all of this other stuff. And so it, they, to, to deal with that and to maintain my own sanity for these people is they create a psychological wall. Right, and so I'll just isolate myself. I do my thing really well. I'll take care of myself. I, I'm very careful who I let in, and so so you end up with these lone wolves, you know, all over. And so, how do we create the containers for these lone wolves to create wolf packs? And so that's where kind of how we use language and all of this, acknowledging that you may have gifts and you see things very differently from me. How do we, you know, work towards, you know, collaborating and, and, and reconcile and then, and then creating the containers to facilitate uh, uh, collaboration in the creation of new products and services. Mm -hmm. And so, and then with that, come up ways with ways of creating sustainable models that allow this part to maintain its purity, but that also can really engage, accept and meet people where they're at, where they're here. And when they're ready to pop, to be able to kind of catch them <laughs> as, they, as they awaken and then kind of move them along. And so part of this is really looking at, and part of the reflection over the last year is what are the systems that humanity needs that modern society does not yet provide? Mm. And so, and with that too, uh, with mystagogical and art transcend, is really looking at mist, the outliers and then, and then supporting them with a network of healers and mystics. Hmm. 
And then related to that, I'm looking at emergence. So Art Transcend is a project I've got some, some funding for uh, to set up a base here in Hong Kong. And, and it's basically this program for artists. Uh, and the premise is that artists will shift consciousness. And if you can, if you can shift the consciousness of an artist in some way or get them deeper into themselves connected to source, then the art that they create will be more profound. And so among artists and healers, what we're trying to do is run them through a common program uh, that will include meetups all around the world, but then also provide a network of healers and mystics because as they push really hard, their shadows are gonna appear and all of their previous wounds are also gonna show up and what you want to be able to do is you want to address them as they show up. Hmm. And the, the sustainable model that we have for the artists right now, and then Raghava, who just joined in, um, just messaged me to see if I'm free. He's the one working with me on the arts project. And then he's got great resources in India. He's working with one of the top galleries in India, and he's got friends that, that are in the art space that have physical places all around India as well, too. Um, but 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 the thing about this is uh, uh, is creating the container and for the artists to support them and to create a sustainable model. What we're doing is we're running kind of a training program, providing a network of of healers and mystics, kind of to support them through this process, and then to pay for it. What they do is they create a piece of art that goes into a collection that backs a stable coin. And so it's really, and the Art Transcend project is just that. And so what right now we're doing is we're, we're kind of getting the resources of people that get it. Because the, the issue is that art has a role in society among the consensus reality masses. It's to help you wonder. So digital art is, the late, is just digital, digitized version of, of media. Media is just industrialized art. And if you take any art form back to its origins, it's to help you understand who are you why are you here and what is this? Mm. But if you look at art today, it's really about buying something high so that I can cheat my taxes or something, <laughs> you know, by donating it or, or something like this. It's, it's, it's a game of money or it's to get you to buy something you don't need. And so how do we get art back to its original role of, uh, and so what we're doing is creating this movement of kind of transcendent art and then, uh, and then, creating a network and a community of transcendent artists that are artists that create transcendent art that are also in the process of transcending. And they realize that. And, and if you transcend all the way to the bottom, you know, it's basically space and time is the canvas, God is the artist and you're the brush. And so how do we help create the containers to identify these people and then, and then move towards that? And so uh, that's kind of one of the questions that Raghavai and I are asking. But the things that you're doing in terms of these systems of bringing people together and the containers uh, are very important. And they're gonna be important at the different levels. And mm. so among consensus reality, which is what most of your stuff is, hey, we need all of these people, you need these different components to do something in space and time. But then when you're dealing with mystics in it, well, if you're dealing with pure mystics from my perspective, Verbal communication is not necessary if you fully let go. Mm. But then that range in between of people that are, are still trying to you know, go back and forth between and, and working with things, it's how do we look at these different levels and then create these containers that can then turn into, with the art and the rituals within them, become cultures. So how do we engineer functional mythologies? And then for that stuff, I, I assume you've seen all the Joseph Campbell stuff around mythos and a functional mythology, the cosmological function, the societal function, the pedagogical function, and the mystical function, and then creating a system that supports all of that, that's consistent within a collection of a group of people. Hmm. And you have a lot of the pieces for this kind of thing. That's what you've been working on in terms of gamification. Yeah, I... I... I mean, there's one thing which I mentioned a little bit about having a chat room that you can yeah. program with a conversation type, a value, conceptual yeah. lens, a goal, yeah. a timer, yeah. and a point yeah. system. 
yeah. and then you invite the people in and then you have a way of supporting the ideas within it and yeah. then so and then you take people through that one chat room which is a very contained specific conversation that has an end goal and then you end it and then you go into another chat room as your second step so it's uh -huh. more taking chat rooms making it a game and, and making it a process where you're taking teams of people through this process in a chat room that hopefully within the next week or two i'm going to have the, the prototype ready um i don't know if that suits anything you want to do but i'm just throwing it out there well, right now I run this master's program and I'm in the process uh, and the part of the thing about this to talk to you about too is I'm in the process of imagining what the future of education is like to do online degrees mm. with VR and you know Topias and Zoom and everything because there are certain things where this works well there are certain where things in which this sucks you know but in VR, we have a shared space. You know, we have, you could high five each other. There's a lot of things. We could travel around together. We can have an adventure together and everything. Um, and so there are certain things. And then, you know, Clubhouse has been a great platform right now as well, too, for serendipity. And so there are certain things that work well with certain things and other things for others. And then now online, you know, I can watch, you know, lectures from MIT and Harvard on any subject. And so what's the role of a, an education institution? And then how do we create like an online kind of school? And so, so those are some practical things that I'm doing in consensus reality with my day job. You know, I'm in my office at my university uh, right now. Is there, um, I was just thinking uh, the, the wait, 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 hold on for, for a second. Hey, Raghava, can you come back? Uh, sorry. Hi guys. Hey. I didn't want to interrupt the beautiful flow. That's okay. That's this is uh, Elijah. He's been doing a I lot like her. In, Hello. in kind of creating systems, gamifying collaborations, and bringing groups of people together. And then he's tied beautiful. in with gene keys and all sorts of stuff. And then the Lucille people are using his work right now too uh, for his their holistic visions symposium. Beautiful. It'll be relevant to you know us in terms of. Uh, getting people together and I, I gave him my projects right up and so we we're he was providing some comments on that and so I'm I'm just getting comments from people you know on kind of the right stuff. beautiful but just to let you know Raghava so I met with Lee Deploy his daughter runs that that zebra one gallery that's a beautiful space yeah and then she's connected to all of these artists and everything too so if we get a list of you know to start this transcendent artist thing He's willing to, uh, to, he gets it. And his issue is that he doesn't know if there are many art people that really get what we're talking about. You may he be says, right. He says, I say, I'm 80 years old. I haven't met too many people in the art community that really understand this. But that's also because it's a chicken and egg problem, you know. One has to create the space for something like that to emerge. And okay. I feel that more and more people are uh, naturally sort of tuned in with that energy. Part of the issue is that he was fairly cynical in that art, it needs, you need to tell people what art is for them to appreciate it. We need to find those who are living that life. It's not yeah. just a conceptual uh, thing, right? So. so we need to get that list together. Yes. And we have... Uh, now, the other sorry. group is I, I, I'm gonna, I'm setting up a call with the, uh, the, uh, with uh, the Ravenwood woman, you know, so they're doing that project I sent you a link to. And right, so right. they're close to it. And so they have a group of artists that they're incubating all around the world. And what the idea there is to look at, there's that group of artists, there's the Lucille artists, et cetera. So there are artists that are roughly in this space already, and it's putting the program together, the training program, offering it to them and then working with those groups. Sense. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing I've been looking at is I, I have a meeting either, I'm gonna do it either later this afternoon or no, it won't be tomorrow, it'll be this weekend. It'll be later this afternoon. And then these guys do trusts. And again, so to keep artists financially solvent, the idea is to do this NFT thing, 
But then the NFT thing is saturated and all this, and there's no critique of it all. And we have to think of the art critics for the, the group that we need because they need to communicate that to the masses. So, so getting the right art critics is important and the KOLs, you know, at least from a marketing perspective. But then the other thing right now I'm looking at is using NFTs as a way, uh, and we talked about this, of investing in the artist. But, but again, it isn't the artist as a corporation, which is what you were talking about yesterday. It's basically a dividend to, so you're investing in the art. You don't, you know, and you have that and you'd like to see the artist succeed. And so you want to set that up. So the know, culture people, is critical. The language is critical. The intention is critical. Yes. Yes, but then what you want to do is the artists when they die, you know, for, and this is something that's big culturally. I, have I like friends, the idea, the I will being distributed. Well, like a percentage of whatever, or almost like a retirement fund. You know, I have this MPF. So when the artist sells a piece of work, a percentage of it goes into this fund that will be distributed to the people that way early investors or early collectors are then rewarded as well too and so it i love the idea i mean so I, I think we should find a few investors i have to run unfortunately okay. yeah. but uh, lovely to meet you alicia and thank you for letting me jump in on this and, and wait, wait, one continue. more thing what do you want me to do with uh, uh aparajita uh, aparajita and um and uh, Abdul, uh, uh, the people that you introduced me to. Aparajita is India's leading contemporary yeah, 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 gallerist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need, she's on track. This is what she wants. No, but, but she's looking for mentorship and everything too, as is uh, 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 the, the, the guy in Goa. What's his name? Uh, Abhay uh, Diol. Abhay is India, one of India's top Bollywood stars. Yeah, no, but what do you, you introduced them to me. I've talked to I'll them. I'll tell you why, because well, they're the few in India who are aligned with our vision. No, but do you and want I've, to get them? To, should we do like a group thing where we talk about this or what do you want yes, to do? Yes, we shall. We shall do a group thing with the three of us. Oh, well, the four, right? Four, three of, uh, I mean, three of y'all and me. Have your assistant set that up. And then we'll, we'll talk about the art transcend thing with all of these events. I've just dropped know. my first NFT on foundation. Check it out. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Lovely right, meeting you. you. <laughs> so that's the art transcend project. And then we do the same thing for, with artists for entrepreneurs as well too. And then for entrepreneurs, what we do is we don't charge them any money, but then if they have a liquidity event, we take a percentage that goes into a pot. Okay. And so I'm, I'm, we're just looking at creative kind of sustainable models uh, for, uh, for all of this. Right. And what I'm also looking at too with this too is looking at in terms of the, 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 the container with mystics and everything, from an Eastern perspective, who you truly are, Elijah, is not your body or your ideas. Who you truly are from an Eastern perspective is the thing that's aware of all of this. And from that perspective, I'm just a character in your dream. <clears throat> and with that, from a container perspective, I can completely surrender to you because <laughs> literally from your perspective, I'm literally just a character in your dream of whatever this is. And at a deep level, I can understand that and appreciate that and completely surrender. That's kind of the lowest level. Generally speaking, the only time there's going to be a conflict is when somebody says something. <laughs> and so that's why language are like spells, intentions, and all of this other stuff. It's, it's very, and especially when you have people that are very sensitive, that also have triggers, you really have to be careful around all of that. And so how do you create the container that prevents the trigger? So at the lowest level, you can surrender to one person. At the second level, all there is is just our shared experience of this moment. And so I can say there seems to be <laughs> this iceberg behind you of the subconscious and the conscious mind. You seem to be wearing glasses. I have a pillow here I can show you. And what I can do is I can use language to point at things where we have a common reference. 
And with this, this is literally all there is. It's just your experience of the now in, in the intersubjective in this moment of what we both have shared together. And I'm not gonna bring in anything that I might know that you don't have a direct experience of, and you don't bring anything that I might know, uh, I may not, not know that you have a direct experience of. And if we have any kind of difference, we try to resolve it here just with this. And then what we can do is still ourselves, see what shows up and then explore that from an idea perspective, but then literally as an emergence like Raghava showing up when he did. And part of, I had a say in that because he literally showed up as a message to me. I sent a, him the link and then he showed up. <laughs> and so, so I had a role in that, but he did show up. And so part of it is the metaphysical bigger forces at work that he kind of were at play in that. And so it's allowing both of us knowing that we're both here, but ultimately whether something happens or not doesn't really depend on you and me per se. We think it does, but ultimately it depends our, on our relationship with the universe. And understanding that, because this is all there is and not imposing our own belief system or our own wills on this, or we can ask it as a collective question but then we see how things play out. And as I said, that a door open here and everything. And, and so having, being in the same physical space is important. Are you open for a little uh, mysterious interjection? Sure. I just want to show you something. Um, so can you see that? Yeah. How can Gino use the Remedy Oracle to inspire? Creativity. Creativity and his masters. Yeah. A little slow. Okay, Elijah. Yo. This is wonderful. I've got a group, you know, Dharmendra has his I Ching Gene Keys thing. Right, right now? There's another guy named John Marshall Roberts I want to introduce you to, but I'm looking for people that can come up with modern forms of divination tools, which it looks like you're, you have here. Yes, except it's, uh, for some reason, it's not working. Anyway. Um, well, well, Elijah, but and yes, that's okay too. But that's interesting. And so part of the whole metaphysical thing <laughs> is looking at that and creating the container that looks at intention and emergence together. Mm. And what I'd like to do, so there were the people, you probably heard of, a, do you know Kathy Tyler and Joy Drake? No. They did, they do the game, it's a board game. They're based in Findhorn. They do a board game called the Transformation Game. Okay, I played that. Yeah. And so they did the angel cards, okay, which is their form of divination. Yeah. But I'm looking at all the people that are creating and can channel these forms of divination because we, that, that's something I don't know. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I'm more of a being in this moment kind of a thing, but people that have systems that can then, you know, and there's a theoretic framework around that uh, for divination are of tremendous interest to me. Because as we build cultures, we're going to need different forms of div divination that are expressed in whatever the cultural semantics are of the organism of the group. I'm trying again. Okay, here's coming in. Can you read that? Yeah. How can Genio use the Remedy Oracle to inspire creativity in his masters? Goodness to value the moral excellence and or high degree of competence. It's the value the combo type is instructional to teach a specific skill in good in a job or activity. Combo type, illusion, something that deceives by producing a false or misleading impression of reality. Goodness so in- that's, So that's the lens. Yeah, so you answer the question using these three. And it's like we're, 
how can Gino use the Remedy Oracle to inspire creativity in his masters? It would be some sort of instruction where they're learning how to perhaps use this or, or bringing in, tying in the different levels maybe with using divination at different parts within your program maybe. Um, value of goodness, you know, that's always good to have. I mean, just an illusion, you know, what are the different illusions at each one of those different levels as part of, you know, getting through Maya, getting through, you know, whatever they have to get through. Well, we do, we do video games and everything. So we, we actually teach them to, to create illusions as well too. Uh -huh. And so, but, but so, so there's the conversation type, which is how we should engage the students, right? Yeah. I don't know. That's how I'm interpreting it. The yeah. value is the main thing is to develop goodness within them. And as long as you develop goodness within them, you know, that's, that's the metric of all of that, which is mm. kind of integrity and, and heart centered kind of approach or heart centered kind of engagement. Yeah. Yeah. And then illusion as the lens means the, the, the way that they develop the values and the conversation is through illusion actually, which is, which what we're talking about right now is online education, right? The online is, 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 you know, if this is the Maya, the online is, is the Maya of the Maya Super like Maya. The video game. <laughs> the, v, the VR world is the world of illusion. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that, is that one way of interpreting this? Yeah. I mean, you, and usually let's say if we were in a zoom call and there's eight other people, each one would give their perspective and insights. And so you, you get multiple sort of interpretations, right? So many yeah. things work. Um, you could be instructing them through the illusion or you could be instructing them about the illusion of whatever is, you know, again, at each one of those levels, there's going to be a different sort of level of illusion, which you have to sort of get through the veil to sort of get to the next level. Right. Yeah. So again, this is just one, one spell, but again, each, each time I use it, it's just like, it's, it's programming the mind to think in terms of, you know, the, the goodness is more the intention and the uh, illusion is attention. So it's bringing together intention and attention in a field of conversation. So there's like, there's 72 conversation types and each one of those is uh, like, if you just press that, then you go to the blog of, it's a, a blog on each one of those. Yeah. That sort of teaches how to teach in a sense. Um, so, I mean, I'm looking to, at some point, hundreds of thousands of people using it, right? And building up a client base and building up and uh, people who want to learn how to use the tools. So they press the button, buy card set. And then there's the conscious communication card set, which has over 400 cards. And the whole yeah. inflow matrix, which is the, the whole business system is contained in those cards. So it's it's kind of like it's so, a so for you right now it's this is wonderful to see so so you're you you've been because I've seen the paper version so you're trying to move these things online right now yeah and then um, wonderful and then and I know you've been kind of reaching out to other communities like like Lucian Tarnal you know I guess they're in Ibiza and you you see these communities uh, clusters of people all around there's the Lucille group the Lucian group. There's uh, there are many of these groups like all around the world right now and they're, they're showing up. Yeah. And I, and so I, I think, sorry. And, and so, and so, so right now you're focusing on taking the, the work that you've been doing in terms of bringing gamifying ways in which people come together. Uh, and, and now you're, 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 you're working towards bringing it to market. Like I, I'm the group in Saskatchewan just ordered 20 card sets. So I'm just going through the process of kind of like setting it up for larger and larger sales of cards. Wait, well, you have the card sets already. Yeah. I, I don't have it. So you can click it by here and it's shipped to you. That's okay. No, but, but it's the same card set that you, uh, that we have from Lucille, the, the, yeah. the PDF. Yeah. It's, it's that card set. There's, there's six of them. I mean, there, you've got two of them through Luciel, the values and the condo types, and then there's four more decks. Uh huh. Can you send me what you've got roughly for that? Cause I, I've got card manufacturers here. 
in, okay. in, in I, you know, I've got people that have made card games and everything. Okay. That's number one. And okay. then number two, that's number one. And then number two is it would be great to get our designers to, to, to do a, like different design versions of these kind of things as well, too. True. Uh, that's number two. And then number three is it would be great to get them onto like a Kickstarter platform or something like that. Yeah. That way you have pre-sales. Yeah. And figuring out a campaign like that would be something I'd love to explore collaborating with you on. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah, because it's it's because I've been trying to get different pieces together. I do have a programmer who's been helping me build this this design and we're working on the chat room but he just started school he's got a new girlfriend and he's got he started a game you know he's he's got no time wait 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 is it uh what's his name uh, in in new zealand huh yeah nova yeah, yeah. oh nova. you're working with nova yeah he's the guy who built that oh nice it was no, he was great yeah he's in my group okay yeah no he's solid i mean he, no, i offered to hire him well i mean <laughs> <laughs> no to move to hong kong to hire him you know i i kind of tapped him a bit oh really well okay well you see why i mean he's uh he's no, his game is wonderful you have you been playing it uh well i logged in and, and everything it's been responding to me and everything too but i i you have haven't been playing it. oh no i've been playing oh. i've been playing since it's i this is my second time playing and this time i got an empire i mean i <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's a it's a great game to teach planetary economics. It's a great game to teach planetary thinking. Like it's uh -huh. he did a great and and with a little funding to get the to get the like uh, the image up. Like he's lacking on the all the the, the yeah. stuff that most games have, but so many games yeah. they lack the substance. Right? Yeah. This has substance. Yeah. So he's he's got a winner there. I mean, I'm hooked. I play every day and. Yeah, so you're so you're working with him on the the, the room thing yes place. he's the guy who's he, like right now he's working on the back end of bringing 12 people in like all the lyciel teams will be listed and then the facilitator has the the seven step process and then the basic process the goals will be sort of like you know how to take an idea and and get, get the whole team behind the one idea right which is going to be uh -huh. the most important things so it's like, and, you, then, and then do you have a design doc for that? No, we've been sort of, you know, I give an interface or we sort of, we're a little ad hoc in terms of how we do this. Um, but I have, I've got some great designs for other inter like, I mean, I'm basically the software, I have a software program designed and I got like tons of interfaces, but like this one, you see because i because i was thinking of you i don't know if you can see. anyway i mean i can't one day i'll have a software team that can just go here build this this is what you do and, and but that's that's you know a little bit down the road but he's the first program i've ever worked with where, where i could just send him stuff and go here it is and he would build it and then you know, as a designer working with a programmer, it was the first time I've ever worked with somebody. And neither, you know, neither has been paid. I mean, um, so he's been working from his heart. How are your financials these days? I'm getting paid um, by these ladies in Yorkton. So I, I've got, you know, it's, it's, it's not tons, but it's, it's a, a living wage. I charge a hundred an hour. Um, and, you know, I, it's a start. I mean, if I sell the 20 card sets, I could make a decent, I mean, just from 20, I could make a few thousand dollars. So, I mean, it's, I'm close to, I just have to get it up and running. And then I think my financial problems should be over, you know? Okay. Well, let's, let's work towards that. You know, I, I, I see this as a, uh, uh, if you don't mind me saying, I see it as a kind of a, a, move towards sustainability yeah you know yeah. kind of post awakening towards sustainable for sure i mean i've been struggling in that other area for a long time um but i but there's a lot of time for r d right like you don't have the money but you got the time as soon as you get the yeah. money a lot of times you don't got the time anymore well there are bigger forces at work <laughs> yeah and so um 
and a part of it is kind of the recognition and appreciation, I think. And I think the Lucille thing has helped with that and everything too. It stabilized, it really stabilized me to get serious and just be taken seriously, right? Like it's, uh, they're, they're very- the other guy, the other guy I, I'm, uh, who's kind of still feeling his way through is uh, our friend um, Graham. Ah, well he- I don't it, know if I've talked to him lately. Yeah, but, no. um Chris, you know, Chris, his mentor guy died and then his dad died as well. And he's, he's came into some funds, but, but then he's got his son and all of this other stuff. But, but if he doesn't figure out what he really wants to do, those funds will kind of uh, dwindle. I think, I think he's really looking at bringing Chris's work into the world with some other yeah. ex-students or ex students. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny. Cause I mean, I was, I don't know if I was pushing him, but you know, I just think his, uh, his magical tavern story game idea, I think is just one of the best I've ever heard. Like, like I, I and me, and that's me and you, right? We're in the kitchen together. <laughs> like yeah. I just, the whole idea of having a portal to go to planetary guardians and, and you and me, for whatever reason, being in that kitchen together, it's, I think it's perfect, you know, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> Well, cooking up stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's, yeah. it's, it's great to see, like, from my point of view of seeing your model. And again, when I, when I sort of saw it, it's just like, okay, that makes, like, I, I see the progression from what you're working on before, but then adding in your projects and pieces and going, I mean, that's a concise plan that takes care of all the, like, my stuff is so general and vague it's not it's not really meant to apply specifics it's meant to be a, a content structure that can fit into any project right so i mean i'm looking at your stuff and i'm going okay like where does it fit where does it not fit how can i put the where would the tools fit and you know i just love seeing systems like that so to me that's that's a central reference point i think for the spiritual development of our species you know you've really got something great there like hats off great great work oh, there thank you. Well, we're all on the same team, so uh, it's all it's all just kind of a, a structure idea. But it's 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 really about finding with a structure like this. It's like, oh, okay, you're doing this for entrepreneurs. Oh, that fits under this category. And oh, you're dealing with people that are going through a spiritual emergency network. Oh, that's this piece over here. And oh, yeah. you're a mystery school. Oh, that's here. And we're decentralized, so you can. How would you hook your mystery school and all of your students? into like a bigger thing. And we're, we're looking at like a, a tokenized university model where you have uh, professors and assistant pro professors that don't need money anymore that can pull in new students. And then prof assistant professors that still need to make money, but they can teach and everything and, and everything. And then you have students that are, are kind of have been through awakening and, and, and are, are kind of working towards developing their gifts. And then all of these people, like you were saying, then creating new products and services for the masses, which they can generate revenue that support people and everything. And, and so it's it's really looking at, 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 at you know, the, the consensus reality as the ocean <laughs> and the fish and everything. And, and, and all of this, whatever you do, you know, even with Chris's life, you know, we all serve the same master. So, mm. you know, how do we collectively support each other on our personal journeys? Well, that's the big one and which, who has which piece and how does it fit together? Because it's, it's uh it's huge like like again when i see what you got it's like lights going off because it just it just fits you know from this whole shared knowledge community ideas yeah. taking into account and, and so so what i'm asking you for right now are these kind of containers and then divination tools okay so the containers divination tools and then right now for you personally it's let's let me take a look at what you've got in terms of decks and gamified ways and then let me find good designers. We can use your designs right now, but we can do good, get good designers and then card manufacturers and everything. And then I'll see if I can get some people to help with a, the Kickstarter campaign so mm -hmm. they can take care of all that stuff. And then we can kind of market that out uh, and, then, and then generate a bunch of revenue and then print the cards and then, and then get that shipment and everything. I can do all of that from Hong Kong. Okay. Okay. Uh... All right. Yeah, no, I got it. That written down and fits into the, the plan. Sounds good. Great to see you.
And yeah. um, I'm going to load this up and I'll make a podcast of it too, because I think you're on a okay. road to really explain Great. really well what, what your idea was piece by piece. So that, that that's, a, I think, for anyone who's in that position or at one of those levels, it's going to help them to position themselves to see, you know, how to get yeah. some support, you know. Great. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Take care. Have a good night. I'll see you.